Will you please be seated? Let us pray. O Spirit of God, mighty fire, grow in us, burn in us, until your radiance fills our soul. O Spirit of God, mighty fire, may your light illumine our minds. O Spirit of God, mighty fire, may your heat consume our wills until we burn for you. May the flames of your love ever blaze upon the altars of our hearts. Amen. You might be thinking this is the fourth Sunday you have preached from the Old Testament. What is up with this Old Testament proclamation stuff? It seems so dated, irrelevant. And after last week's sermon, the golden dung heaps, probably irreverent. No doubt that we struggle with much from the Old Testament if we know the stories at all. Newsflash! This past week, one of the candidates for the presidency of the United States said that he was called by God to run for the presidency, and then further commentary by his wife used the term or at least the idea of the burning bush. Now, no doubt, many from the press did not understand what she was talking about. They probably thought that um, Bastrop was going to burn again as a sure, sure sign that this guy should run. After all, most of us do not know the Old Testament stories. You have to be fairly well versed, especially in Genesis and Exodus, to understand this. The burning bush refers to Moses' first encounter with God on Mount Sinai. And I must confess before you, I get a little nervous, or maybe a lot nervous, when someone makes reference to God appearing to him or her personally. I begin to shake a little when it, someone says to me, God told me, or God said this to me. And especially when we start talking about burning bushes and I saw God. But on the other hand, we in the Christian tradition believe that revelation, not the book, folks, but revelation is, is integral to Christianity. That which is hidden now comes to light. Without the revealing of God's will, then all we are is a bunch of people who make up stories about this God and then make up laws and try to follow them and say, all the while, God told us. Without revelation, we probably need therapy and to spend much time on a therapist's couch for all of our delusions. The question for us this morning is, that does, is, does God speak to us? And if so, how? The reason that I am taken back, concerned, the use of burning bush metaphor in this candidate's run for president is that the burning bush is considered in biblical literature to be a theophany. 
Theo, God, Theophany, appearance. Theophanies, if you read the biblical literature, are extremely rare. They are for certain times and appear to certain people. Now, certainly the Bible is full of visions and dreams and subjective conversations with God, but theophanies, extremely rare. And in fact, the big three are the ones we know for theophanies. Moses, Elijah, and Isaiah. These are the biblical hall of famers. They are the ones that receive the appearance of God. Now, I will tell you, it is difficult for me to place any presidential candidate, Democrat or Republican, on the same mantle with the big three Hall of Famers in the Bible. Let me ask you, can you really know a person without knowing that person's without ever having seen that person's face? You can know about a person. You can know a personal history of an individual, their characteristics, what they like and what they do not like. But if you have never seen their face, you could not pick them out of a crowd. Even Moses who had more theophanies, God appearances, than any other person in biblical literature, never saw the face of God. Moses longed, longed to God, know God more fully. And yet, a part was withheld from him. In our text today, we see Moses. He asked God, Will you show me your full glory? And God answers, I will show you my goodness. I will show you my graciousness. I will show you my mercy. But you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. Here's what I'll do. I will pass by, and I will hold out my hand so that you do not see it, and then I will withdraw my hand, and you shall see my back. Now, the Hebrew word for back is the same for rump. Now, I suspect some of you are thinking, well, what is this thing, Richard, you talked about? the dung heap last week, and now we're talking about the rump of God. Maybe, maybe it's a Freudian thing with him, you're probably thinking. I didn't ask for this text. This is a lectionary text. This should not surprise us, though. How many of you can go outside right now and stare at the naked sun with the bare eye. Or if you could do it long enough, you would most likely go blind. Now, I had a fifth grade teacher named Mrs. Smith. And it was way back then when we were supposed to have a solar eclipse. I was in the fifth grade. And Mrs. Smith told us, don't you dare look at the solar eclipse with your naked eye or you'll go blind. Now, I'm going to tell you, in those days, when a fifth grade teacher told you something, it was the same as a theophany. It was God speaking. And I was certainly afraid that blindness was in my future. And on Saturday afternoon, when it was supposed to happen, 
My mother always had a litany of chores back there in the garden. And she'd got me up and said, it's time to go to work in the garden pulling weeds. I cannot, I cannot do it, for I will go blind. Now, she thought I was making up an excuse, because no one likes pulling weeds. But for Aunt Mrs. Smith had told me I'd go blind, and she was never wrong. But it did not faze my mother. And I'm out there in the afternoon pulling weeds, kind of like this, looking up a little bit, waiting to go blind because I knew it was going to happen because I couldn't stop myself from looking at the eclipse. That was the longest day of my life. Such frightening words of these. See the face of God and die? I believe it's because so that no one would claim to know God fully. So that we would remember that God is greater than even the most magnificent thought we can have about God. Let's talk on the philosophical principle to know something. I have in my hand a pen. It can pull apart, I know that. It writes in black, I know that. I know this pen. And as soon as I know this pen, it is beneath me and becomes my instrument which I control. I can write a letter with it. I can write a sermon with it, I can stick you with it, because I know the pen. Now, if the finite can actually know what is infinite, then doesn't that which is infinite become less so? Those who say they know God are are pretty sure that they know God. That God told them. Often the God they know ends up running errands for them like this pen. Even those with a theophany in the scriptures, it's never complete. Carbart, Swiss theologian, gives a three-word principle that it is the summation of the body and hermeneutic and interpretation of all philosophical and theological understanding of Scripture and church dogmatics. And it is God reveals God's self. Now, the word for us, then, is really not theophany, but the word epiphany. Epi in the Greek can be upon, on, or over. But it can also mean before appearance and after appearance. The before appearance in this text is God promises, I will show you before I pass by my face, passes by these three things. My goodness, my graciousness, and my mercy. And then, after appearance, when God passes by, you can see my backside. You can see where I am going. You can see where I am heading, and you can follow. When we see only the backside of God, it creates in us or should a sense of humility about the God we proclaim. 
leads us. This past week, Bill and I discussed the word called to ministry. It's a word that is used in the Bible. But we both owned up to the fact we hate using that word called. Some will mishear it. Did you hear God? Did you see God? Now, I can tell you, before you are ordained into the ministry, or lay chaplaincy, you go through a battery of psychological exams, and one of the questions, have you ever audibly heard God? If you check that box, you'll be selling insurance. I had never seen a burning bush with God speaking out of it. I have never had a theophany. I find it difficult to use the word called. I know that there are some who claim they know where God is going, what God will do when God gets there, and what part, integral part, they will play in the whole scenario. I am not sure what God is doing. But what I am sure of is God's presence in many things. In ways that I could not have conceived and in ways that sometimes ruffle my feathers. But God didn't ask for I cannot say that I know God. It is too blasphemous for me. But what I can affirm is God's goodness, God's graciousness, and God's mercy. The fullness of the cross. Jesus Christ. And I can affirm that there are those times I only see the backside of God where God has already gone before me. And even sometimes that is more than I can handle. The backside is enough. And I can affirm with the Apostle Paul that now you and I see through a glass darkly. Now, we only know in part. But any more than that, I believe that we come perilously close to taking the name of the Lord. In vain. And if you recall, that's one of the big ten. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Would you please stand? <clears throat> 